So since I've got this set up going for the main channel at the moment, I've just recorded a video about 14 amazing new tutorials and Blender projects. I thought it'd be a bit of a crime if I didn't take this high quality setup and use it to do a video for the second channel. So we're going to have a discussion today about how to start making tutorials for Blender. Before we do, I've been uh, I've moved to a new organizational system recently and I'm really happy with it. I'm actually I'm paying some money for ClickUp. I really like that software. So I've got like all my, my lists of uh, video projects and then go into a list view and look at different priorities and like color code where they go. I just think it's very nice. It's also helped me to stay on like top of contact uh, tasks as well because I usually miss a lot of emails. So how to start making tutorials for Blender. Whenever I talk to people about this, let me just remove distractions. One of the things I try and say is you should try and give people like a very, very visual representation of the final result immediately, like as fast as you can. Because when people click on the videos, people generally, like the mass audiences, don't really want to sit around for ages to get answers. They tend to skim through videos and look for the most important points, which is a kind of depressing thought to think about if you're like a content creator because you spend this time like meticulously making content and editing it together and if you make like one mistake people will call you out for it but they're just going to skip through the videos anyway mostly but that is a generalization you know there is definitely a space for long form content on the space as well but the mass youtube audiences generally want fast results very quickly so to kind of compromise between those two spaces of people that want long form content and those that don't the thing that you can do which benefits both is immediately show them a visual result if you can't be bothered to do it as well then then one beneficial thing to do is do a very quick rundown before you start the main tutorial. I think I've only done this once and people really appreciated it. The reason I've only done it once is because it takes more effort to prepare. I believe it was the light nodes video. So I said to them, hey, this is the new tutorial for today. Before we get into it, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of what's happening. So it's like, here is the very low resolution version of how we get from point A to point B. And then I was like, okay, that's the quick version done. Now we do the tutorial. So it has something for everyone. This is what you can get. This is the quick version this is the long version so if you were ideally doing tutorial content and you wanted to maximize the educational usage of it then that's the way that you would want to do it but obviously that's not very suitable for everyone so there's also a distinction to be made in the types of content which is where the narrative is different depending on how granular and step by step you want to be so the two main categories of tutorials I tend to break down into you can do this and I did this. So one of them is usually a more step by step and one of them is more of a narrative breakdown. Narrative breakdowns tend to do better for the wider YouTube audience. Like, hey, by the way, I was doing this. This is what I made. This is a general process. Have a nice day. It's more entertaining and a lot of people go for that to get the higher view counts because that's the stuff that's more accessible. People can watch that without having to know the intricacies of software. However, even though they're more enjoyable, they're not always as educationally valuable because we're not showing people the full step by step process of how to get there. So if you're making tutorial content for people, you need to make a decision there as to how educationally viable do you want to be or how entertaining and intriguing do you want to be? And also we run into the question of how do you want to maximize your view counts? Adjusting your content for the algorithm is something that everyone needs to decide how they want to do, like to what degree, because some people lean into it really, really hard and some people don't really lean into it at all. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. I mean, I'm sure there are some creators that sit there and judge every other creator's things like, oh yes, well, they got 20,000 views by using this technique. So we're going to use this technique as well. Like, and just like really strategically calculating and being, oh yes, how can we maximize? How can we become the best? It's up to you to choose how you want to do it. There's no right or wrong way. People will appreciate the content you make anyway. There's, I mean, there's always going to be someone to appreciate it in this community, but it becomes a very subjective field because sometimes, okay, I'll give you the demonstration for me. I don't lean into it too hard when I'm just doing my enjoyable, usual content. I lean into it much harder when there are stakes involved and you can see a representation of that with like the Nvidia sponsored videos where like the titles were like really emphasized. We were using a lot of capital letters to kind of, you know, maximize the clickbaity element of it, you know, and like having the right kind of face, the thumbnails and doing all that stuff and like picking topics that have historically done well, things like Cycles X, like five new Blender tips, you know, all that kind of thing. But a lot of that stuff's not as cognitive. And for me, I like to kind of make myself known in the community, I guess, by doing more interesting things and, you know, projects, products, add-ons, that sort of stuff. So it's always like this balancing game of choosing between what's going to do well and what you think is going to 
be important from like um, a more cultural perspective, if that makes sense. I guess you can think about it that way. Where do you want to sit in the YouTube culture and where do you want to sit in the Blender culture? And there's a certain amount of overlap, but there are different spaces. So like evidence of that would be the Twitter versus YouTube response to things. I mean, like whenever I put a video out, I put a little Twitter post out saying, hey, you know, I've done this video, come and take a look at it. And um, there's been like an inverse relationship between the attention that they get on Twitter compared to YouTube. Now the Twitter posts don't get many likes anyway, so it could be completely coincidental, but usually when they get more likes, the YouTube videos don't get recommended <laughs> that well, which is like the opposite of what you would expect. So even though there are overlap, there's still kind of different bubbles of larger communities. And I think a reason for that is as well is also that on Twitter, we're surrounded by more professionals and experts than regular audience members. But it kind of depends on how you've built your bubble around the social spaces. So for more tips on actually making videos, one thing I would say is avoid scripts as much as you can. Now, maybe it's a bit hypocritical of me to say that because for the first like couple of years or three years, no, maybe not three, two, two and a bit. Most of the time I've been running on like full script mode for the videos and the reason for that was because it gives you like a good sense of safety you know exactly what you're gonna say you don't need to worry too much about messing up you just got to read the script and there you go but it does make you very robotic and the thing is it takes up a lot of time preparing scripts and you know, it's a very meticulous process it can get quite annoying and really the the naturality of just speaking from like explaining something as it's in front of you really helps people to connect with what you're saying I think so try and avoid scripts as much as you can uh, one thing I like to do is if I really need a guide of some kind I tend to write it with as limited words as possible like at a bare minimum like three words like um node shortcut and then shortcut and I'll be like okay well I want to talk about the shortcut so let's have a let's spend a bit of time talking about this and how it could help you you're kind of like filling in words as you're thinking about the point that you're making oh by the way you can press control plus g to make node groups and this is going to make like a group input and a group output node inside of the node group and you can connect these together you're just like rolling off a narrative while you're just reading those little points when I've done things like the blender tips videos um I tend to make demonstration blender files for each of the tips and one of the interesting things about that is you can leave clues for yourself in those files so sometimes there'll be like a little uh, text editor window with a couple of notes that I want to talk about so while I'm looking at the file I can think okay well these are like the general points I want to get across if I start to lose my train of thought then let's just have a quick glance up there and oh yeah that's another point I wanted to say so you can leave clues to yourself while you're doing it to try and keep yourself going what's another thing if you're going to try and build a like a community an audience a fan base by making tutorials you've got to learn which people's suggestions to ignore because you'll get people asking you for like very hyper specific things like you know you'll be doing these, these general interesting new feature videos and then someone will say hey can you teach me how to make like an xyn25962 ramjet engine and i'm like okay yeah you're gonna watch that you'll, you'll be the only person that's gonna watch that <laughs> so realistically and i've always thought about it this way is that it's the job of the tutorial maker to turn noise into relatable, identifiable, recognizable patterns. The noise would be like all of the features and all of the possibilities for things you can do with the features and you are supposed to make an interesting narrative out of that. How can we make X interesting thing or Y interesting alternative using these features, you know, pull them out of thin air and show people that they can make something interesting with it. Because not everyone has that kind of creative intuitive spark just to continuously make new things all the time. And there's like a whole multitude of reasons for that. So it's your job to interpret noise and show people the way this is the way another question I get asked when people ask me about wanting to make tutorials so I'm just gonna like uh, clean this while I'm talking is um is the tutorial space on YouTube too oversaturated and I think that's uh, not really a simple thing to answer if you asked a question is there enough content to keep the general blender user entertained on YouTube the answer is yes um, but is it oversaturated? No, because I don't really think that's how the algorithm works. On other platforms, maybe the algorithms are designed in a way where the more people are making like Blender tutorial content, then the fewer views everyone gets, but that's not really how YouTube works because YouTube keeps bouncing people off of everyone else's videos. So in this way, the more people there are making Blender content, the more times viewers bounce around onto your content. And you might think, well, you know, there's only so much time in a day that every individual user can spend watching Blender content. And I actually think there's a lot more time that they could be spending watching the content. So I don't really think we've hit that point of diminishing returns yet, but it's kind of hard to say. And also keep in mind that not every user knows about every Blender creator or is subscribed to all of them. So there's like a million Venn diagrams of certain points overlapping and not. So I really don't think it's a simple question to say like whether or not the space is oversaturated with Blender creators. There are certainly a lot of them. That's, that's true. And I think everyone knows that, but I most certainly don't think the competition works in the way that I think people think it does. On our YouTube studios, when we look at analytics, we can actually see what other creators 
our audience members are watching. And that's always a very interesting metric. Obviously, Blender Guru is in uh, all of ours. But on a personal level, I think there are lots of personal benefits for someone making tutorial content. I mean, by teaching other people things, you really help to solidify it in your own mind. That's just like a fact that lots of people know that. Teaching people helps you to remember things and understand them better because you learn ways to explain things to people. You create anecdotes which help to link the knowledge with relatable things in their lives. And it also inspires you into new directions. Also, it gives you something to aim for. Like a lot of the projects we'll do for making videos also become like portfolio pieces and things that can really be shown off. It also opens up so many opportunities if you can raise an audience with it. So I definitely think it's worthwhile if you are interested. I mean, it's really like, it doesn't take too much effort, relatively speaking. You can't just sit there with an interesting blend file in front of you and just like casually talk about it. Like there's no requirement for doing like hyper interesting editing and putting like so much quality and effort into something. It really doesn't cost much to get into. You know, recording and editing software is free. OBS Studio, DaVinci Resolve, or Olive is another video editing alternative. So really, if you have the time, there's, there's nothing to lose. But I will say just like on a kind of um, personal, what's moral principle level i would like to see more creators sharing other creators i call this uh tending the garden the tending the garden principle it's not really coming from like a religious or a spiritual place it's more like i just feel like everything is better when you tend the garden there are things that you'll avoid like negative situations you'll avoid and everything will just work better in the long run if you tend the garden what i mean by that is help out where you can even if it doesn't directly benefit you if you have a space to mention another creator and help them get a few more views or a few more subs why not tend the garden, you know, just water that plant. If another creator is struggling with something and needs a bit of help, well, you know, pick up that weed, take that problem away, help them tidy it up, you know, just keep everything nice and clean. It benefits everyone. Although I do slack on one aspect of tending the garden, which is responding to messages. I am very sorry. I am ashamed. I'm very bad at it. Please accept my humble apologies. But I will say, in my opinion, there are not enough creators tending the garden. There are quite a few just like putting up picket fences around their spot and trying to make it as pretty as possible, making a statue out of like clickbait, you know, and doing all of that. Or weeds are growing around the outside of it. It's very really, really weird like metaphors. So make some tutorials, make them interesting, intriguing, exciting. Consistency is key on YouTube and that even applies to like branding and visuals as well. If you have a certain template style for your thumbnails, then make sure you keep using it. People like to see consistency consistency and recency when they click on channel pages because if they see that a video has been made recently they'll go ah oh, this person likes making content maybe i'll subscribe if they see consistency they'll think ah oh, this person knows what they're doing you know they've got they've got a plan going like a plan in motion consistency and recency give a sense of value and you know just like clean design work and branding overall because appearances matter quite a lot on YouTube. Um, so yeah, maybe keep all of that in mind if you're interested in starting. I mean, I'm always available to give more advice as well. I'm getting a bit better at responding. And um, yeah, if there's any questions you want me to like answer or talk about, then, you know, I quite like just chatting about random shit on this channel. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I will see you next time, Padawan.